Hello again, it's Charlie Epsom, and it's been a while since I've made a video for you. Um, we are currently on my latest purchase, which is a 27 sailing boat, 27 foot sailing boat called Radioactivity. Was not called Radioactivity when I bought it. It is now. Um, and uh, today I'm going to take it out uh, for a bit of a sail with a couple of friends who've never been sailing before. Um, I do this quite often. Um, it's not too difficult. Um, what I wanted to show you is the homemade navigation system um, that I've built for radioactivity um, based on a Raspberry Pi that I've been using for several hundred miles of sailing now, including um, a very rough sort of 4.6, 4.7 um, trip round Aaron. Um, and it's performing pretty flawlessly. Um, so I'm going to show you what I've done and uh, maybe you want to do the same yourself. Okay. Raspberry Pi 2 based system, so it's the quite high power uh, machine that came out about six months ago. Um, and I built this over Christmas basically. Um, so, effectively, we've got the main dial here, which is obviously your compass heading. Um, that's the red arrow that tells you which direction you're heading in. Now, we're moored up at the marina at the moment, so we're approximately 090. Yeah. The yellow arrow there is the bearing to the next waypoint. Um, this here on the left is the speed, goes from 0 to 10 knots, uh, obviously this is a 27 foot sailing boat so I think the most I've had it was just shy of 8, it's a reasonably fast boat. The blue line at the back, if I try and rock the boat a bit it might move, um, is the artificial horizon, um, which obviously is useless but I put it there because I could. And this one at the left, right here, to be honest, I haven't really finished it yet. Um, I got the idea of gliders, um, that you'd have a variable speed indicator. Um, however, I really need to do something about it. Um, the idea is that as you accelerate, it goes up, and as you decelerate, it goes down. Um, but it's not really responsive enough yet. Then here, we've got some choice buttons. So we've got magnetic course now. We can get the true course. And we can set the magnetic declination here, which in large where I am is usually about minus three. You can also get the GPS course made good. Now, bearing in mind, since we're not moving, that's going all over the place. In general, I leave it at magnetic, and it ties in very well with my manual, old-school, analog compass. We've also got day mode, night mode, and there's an automatic button here, which basically... Um, decides for itself whether it's day or night, which obviously at the moment it's day. So night mode's surprisingly handy, um, have tried it out as well. Um, this here is like a small little um, display which shows a rough outline of where we are. We can zoom in. It's really just got the coastline. Um, wasn't initially part of the idea, but um, I basically did it by accident, um, so it gives you the scale there on the bottom. Um, and the way I got the coastlines in was I wrote a little Google, uh, a little um, Python script that allowed me to download charts off Navionics and literally just pick points on them, which then went into a data file. And this is just plotted with the um, PyLab um, code. It'll also show you your wake as well. And you can see there's some waypoints here, which I've programmed into a text file. So you can select whichever waypoint you want um, here. Let's just give you an example. Let's say northwest quarter of Aaron, and that's the direction it is. The range is 19.7 nautical miles, and it'll be down here somewhere. So you can literally just line your course up with your waypoint, and um, that'll sort that out. And um, then here we've got two graphs, which is a speed and a pitch and roll, um, which are actually quite useful. You can get your speed history, and again, um, you can get how much abuse the boat's getting. You can reset the tripometer here with this big green button, which I tend to do, obviously. Um, and then here we've just got your next waypoint, the range and bearing for the next waypoint, 
and your current lat and long position and the time. Um, they're the main functions. There's also this function here, which is a man overboard button. Now that is actually hardwired into a man overboard switch that I've wired in behind the tiller um, in an emergency stop type switch. So if you press the physical button, it's the same as pressing this software button here. And what happens is, of course, if it lets me press it, of course, as soon as I come to demonstrate it, it will crash naturally. Um, right, let's let's re let's cut there. Right, uh, so we'll uh, just come back from cutting. I found out what the problem is. It, after months of reliable operation, I've actually got Wi-Fi here at the marina, so I don't use this Wi-Fi dongle. The Wi-Fi dongle's in. I've never got to the bottom of it, but it does screw up some of my software functionality. So now you can see everything's working. You can see here on this main display, things are quite big and we're pointing that way, which is to Large Marina, which we already are. So just for fun, we'll just, just to demonstrate what happens, I'm going to go for Clyde Marina, which is down there. And then I'm going to press the Man Overboard soft button. As I say, pressing the hard button would be the same. Press Man Overboard. It does three things. One, it records it in the electronic log. Two, it zooms this display right in and marks the Man Overboard with this green box. Three, it programs a new waypoint into the text file called Man Overboard with a location marking. And that arrow there is where that Man Overboard is. So if you were sailing away, you simply follow back to that arrow and it will give you a constant range and bearing um, to it. And I've tested this, uh, not with a real Man Overboard, but uh, obviously with dummies, and it does work pretty well. Certainly if you're just two up, you know, just two of you sailing, um, one of you goes over the side, chances are it's not going to be the person with the tiller. So the guy on the tiller just smashes the button behind the tiller and the computer will take care of the rest. Um, it's not perfect. Obviously, you don't want somebody to fall overboard. So um, it's not, you know, a sort of substitute for good seamanship, but it is an aid and it, it does help. OK. Give the runner a bit of In terms of the sort of systems that I've got to work this, there's a Raspberry Pi 3 and uh, 2 in here. There's a GPS dongle here, and that's a BU353 unit, which is very commonly used in the sort of building community. So it's just a USB GPS dongle that plugs into the Pi. And then most impressive is all, I can't think if I can show you it, but I might be able to, basically underneath here. Dark, basically a long way away from metal effectively is the um, Yocto 3D the Yocto 3D um, sensor which is an amazing piece of kit that I really recommend um, so basically it's got a um, three gyros on one sensor so and a magnetic compass so it records direction angles and accelerations um, USB straight back to the Pi um, Yocto provides all the um, APIs for it in whatever language you want. I've used the Python one. Very, very easy to set up, even for people like me. And I've been very, very happy with the Yocto device, actually. It's, um, it's worked better than I could have anticipated, to be honest. Um, so I think overall, um, the computer, Raspberry Pi, people say it's a $20 computer. By the time you've bought it and a memory card and a power supply, etc., it's probably more like £30. I think the display was 40 the Yocto was about 30 um, the GPS dongle was probably about 30 as well, and then your keyboards, mice, etc. Um, so by the time I've built it, you're looking at £150-ish. But given um, what it can do and the fact that one single marine instrument could easily set you back, three, four, five hundred, 
um, I think it's a pretty good solution. And like I say, I have abused it and I have been out in very, very heavy, heavy weather and it has worked. Um, and the beauty of these low cost systems is if something breaks, if you put a, um, a winch handle through it, it's a 40 pound display, you go and buy another one. And obviously I've got all your standard um, equipment, um, normal GPS, VHF, radio, handheld, and most importantly, I've got paper charts and I know how to use them. Um, so we're not relying on the Raspberry Pi. We're just using it um, to make our lives easier. And I think uh, that that's probably the best way to do it. Um, if you've got any questions, just, uh, just ask and I'll do my best to help. Thank you very much. Oh,